Hello, this is Vampire here to talk about Captain Fairbairn once again. And this is the cover of his book, Get Tough. And on the cover of the book, the technique featured is called the chin jab. Since it's on the cover of the book, I think it's fairly safe to assume that he thought that it was a very special technique. It's, it's something that he, he really favored. And then now let's look on the inside of the book. And uh, right here, you can see the chin jab. Um, figure 13 is just your straight up knee to the balls. Figure 14 is the chin jab. And you might be going, well, so I guess you could do the knee to the balls first and then the chin jab. The chin jab is a very versatile technique from my understanding. So you could knee the guy in the balls first or you could knee the guy in the balls later. Like you could chain it with a variety of moves but the one thing that I, I really wanted to uh, emphasize today was that not only can you chain it with moves like knee to the balls um, you could do it simultaneously so when you look at figure 14 his his knee is up it's not hitting the guy in the balls but it looks like it's kind of ready to do so if you just look at that illustration it just looks like he's really jumping in to the chin jab. That's why the foot must be lifted, right? And uh, same with the cover. It's kind of hard to tell that, you know, that knee, his in this case, the left knee of the guy doing the chin jab is up. Um, that is for kneeing the guy in the balls. Now, could it be for jumping off the floor to, to put more power into your chin jab? Absolutely, absolutely. But... There's a video with Captain Fairbairn where he's actually demonstrating the technique. I'm pretty sure it's him. He's wearing a mask, but I'm pretty sure it's him. And he is doing a simultaneous knee to the balls and chin jab at the same time. So um, why? That, that is the question. So, so that's one thing that's clear because thanks to the video footage, However, there's another video where he's not doing that. So it, it, to me, that says that it's optional. You know, it, it just depends. If you feel like you could do it, do it. If not, don't worry about it. You know, just it, let's not, um, how do you call it, get tangled up in specifics. Is It's just get the thing done, you know, whatever it takes. Don't worry about did this happen or this, did this not happen. No, you know, so in that sense, he's very no-nonsense attitude, in my opinion. Um, and that's the vibe that I get from his videos and also his books. So um, why, why would he show that, where you could simultaneously hit the guy in, in, the, in the groin? And, and that is another thing that to me is kind of like a, a repeated thing in his techniques okay so when you look at the chin jab it says in the book that the chin jab is a member of the tiger's claw technique okay so the tiger's claw comes from Chinese martial arts from my understanding because Captain Fairbairn cross trained in Chinese martial arts Japanese martial arts and of course Western Western martial arts combat sports so uh, he, he did all three, and uh, the, the tiger's claw was something that he picked up from the Chinese martial arts, my understanding. And the tiger's claw, the chin jab, is obviously you, you're striking the chin. But what makes it also a tiger's claw is that the fingers can go into the eyes, as you can see in this illustration. The way that I like to think of that is this technique, the chin jab, is like a shotgun. <laughs> it, it's like a freaking shotgun. Um, and, we, and when you're talking about a shotgun, we need to address always two things. The buckshot and the slugshot, right? And in, and in this case, uh, I just call this technique like a shotgun. So which one is it? Is it, is it the buck? shot or is it the slug shot and what's crazy about this is that it's both the palm strike to the chin is your slug shot 
the fingers to the eyes, that's your buckshot. You know, so it's your fingertips are like a bunch of those pellets so it could spread out and hopefully you have a much better chance because you have five, you know, you have four fingers plus your thumb that something will go into the eyes. It's that's your same idea as a buckshot. And the palm heel, the hardest part of your your palm just striking up at the at the chin as hard as you can lifting his, lifting his chin his his head up that's a slug shot that's a powerful shot you know so to me the um the common thing about that and also the knee the simultaneous knee strike to the groin so the eyes whether you get the tiger's claw or not it's optional just like the knee to the balls but if you can, you would do all of that simultaneously. So you're doing, the main move is the chin jab. The main move is hitting the guy with your palm heel onto the chin, an uppercut, basically, with, with your open palm, right? So you don't break your fists. Okay, so boom, that's, that's what you're doing. If you can get the simultaneous right into the eyes, great. If you could get the knee to the balls, great. So... That concept there, why, 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 why is he thinking that way? To me, uh, the closest explanation that I got comes from the Russian martial arts back in the day, um, in the late nineties. Um, no, no, my bad. Early two thousand, early two thousand, I was in Austin, Austin, Texas. And uh, I met a guy that was super, super into Russian martial arts who eventually became a Russian martial arts instructor. And I remember, like, how is it different, I asked him. And, and he said, well, the main difference is the way they think about it. So, so the way you're learning it, the, the, the way your perspective on it is not the same. In, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, he, he made it clear to me that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu people look at techniques, right? Whereas to the Russian method was more principle. So the, so the difference is it, with principle, you're not looking for a technique. If something's there, you're going to go for it. And you're kind of making it up on the spot right there. Whereas to in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you're looking for specific techniques. Now, I don't necessarily think all sambo people train this way all russian martial arts people train this way but the russian martial art that he was teaching me that did also have tie, ties in with sambo that's the way he was explaining it to me and so he was saying it was about principle and one of the principles were to cause as much pain as possible meaning Let's say I'm trying to armbar somebody. I'm going to attack the elbow, right? He was saying, well, why not also attack the fingers while you do the armbar? Or why not um, load the wrist up and the shoulder and then attack the elbow joint? Why? Because he, he was saying that the brain has a tougher time dealing with that because it becomes sensory overload. overload. And I, I believe, I don't remember if he actually said this, but I believe he mentioned that it makes breaking easier when you overload the sensor. The brain doesn't kind of know how to protect itself, the, the body. It doesn't know how to protect you because it's getting sensory overload. And therefore, you could, you could break the joint. Something's got to go. And you'll have a much better chance of breaking it. So that's why... You know, you would do multiple, you do multitask instead of one thing. And in the martial arts world, that makes sense to me just because I know that what's the difference between a white belt and a black belt is from my years of martial arts training, even though it's the same stuff that they both do, the technique may be the same. The black belt is going to multitask. The white belt is going to be a one track mind. So if they're blocking, they're only blocking. You know, the black belt would block and already be going into a better position for a counterattack. You know, they, they would be thinking of other things. You know, they, they're able to do that. 
whereas the white belt cannot. If they're blocking, they're only blocking. If they're attacking, they're only attacking, you know. Whereas the black belt would be able to attack while defending, while, you know, keeping certain areas protected, going into a certain angle that is going to put him in a better position later in the future, you know, th things like that. So multitasking, right? So it just makes sense to me. So Captain Fairbairn to me right here is saying the same thing, you know, without really explaining it um, in detail. I believe that this is about multitasking. So if you can add the knee, you can add the claw to the eyes, to the chin jab technique, even better. You want them to get overload where they're going, what, what's going on? Their brain is going, oh, oh, I just got hit here and here and here. A triple attack, right? So which one do I block? Which, which one do I start defending? What, what do I do? And then you're already into the next move, you know? So um, the other thing, I, I don't want to make this video too, too long because I, I know I've, I've made some pretty long ones recently. Um, I wanted to mention that the Captain Fairbairn's method, the gutter fighting, and, and uh, by the way, I love that name. I know people also uh, call it different names like defend you or defend you, you know, the, the stuff like that. Um, I like gutter fighting because like, you know, you, I mean, you got street fighting. Okay, so what's worse than street fight? The, the street, the gutter. It, it's just more desperate. It sounds nastier. Gutter fighting. <laughs> I like that. I like that name a lot. A lot, actually. The only thing I could think of was trench fighting. So back in the day, when, when I had my K4S system, I came up with something called trench fighting. And that was my CQC at the time. Um, but anyway, anyway, uh, gutter fighting to me is awesome. So what I want to say is gutter fighting to me is an assault uh, style. It's an assault system. And there was a guy on YouTube that's super into this, but he also does MMA training. And he also does like, you know, with the MMA comes the kickboxing, the boxing, the wrestling, and the BJJ. So anyway, um, he was saying that in his, I believe it in, in his MMA training, so in the sparring that they do at the MMA gym, uh, he, he said this stuff, it, it don't really work. You know, and he's like, I really like this. He likes Captain Fairbairn, but I think he's kind of going through a dilemma where he's like, this stuff doesn't really happened there why he he understands that it's two different things but i don't think he really really gets it so um and, and i'm not saying that i'm smarter than him or something like that no i i just think i have a uh maybe a, a perspective that might help him and it might help you guys too so this is for assault okay and mma is a combat sport which is that's fighting that's for fighting. Okay. Yeah, I know this is called gutter fighting, but let's just put that aside for a moment. This is assault. MMA, the cage fighting, right? MMA is sport. That combat sport is fighting. And, and I don't care if it's on the street or in the war or whatever. If you're fighting, you are fighting. Fighting means there's an exchange. All right. If I just came up to someone and they're not paying attention and I swung a baseball bat as hard as I could to the back of their head, yes, it's a chicken shit move. But if I do that, is that fighting? No. No one would say that that was just a cheap shot. That's assault. So that's what this is. Okay. Fighting goes back and forth. All right. That, that's a fight. So... If you, in a street self-defense situation where you're about to become a victim, there's no rules, right? I mean, the other person already violated and is about to violate you. They're, they're crossing lines they shouldn't cross. And they're, they picked you out. And they're here to tear you up. Whatever. You know, human trafficking, take your organs, who knows what. They're here to do it to you, okay? They're going to violate you, make you... At that point, you could cry all you want. You, you're going to be a victim. They're going to be completely helpless. And the only thing that's going to help you is their mercy, right? 
So before that happens, you are allowed to assault them, okay? Because, you know, they're breaking the law and you got to protect yourself. So in that case, you made the decision, I'm going to assault them before they get to me. All right. So you assault them. You're, you're good. This is where this comes in. You're going to do Captain Fairbairn's method. All right. You don't want to be human trafficked. You're going to do this. Okay. If it turns into a fight. So you, let's say you chin jab the guy, you claw his eyes and you knee him in the balls, just like we were talking about. Let's say you do all three, but this dude is just tough. He's has 60 pounds on you. He grew up in the streets. He's the toughest nails. He's a nasty, nasty psychopath individual. Okay. He's, he's just a wolf and you're a domesticated dog all your life. How, how are you supposed to go? You know, there's just limits. There's just limits. I, I don't, you could be um, pack leader, all right? Uh, you could be a dog, very courageous, brave, tough dog, pack leader. You go up against the tiger, you just, there's limits, okay? One-on-one -on -one against a tiger, it, it's just impossible, okay? So if that happens, because you never know, you never know. You never know what you're facing against. And, and they may not even be uh, formidable in size, but you never know, okay? So if it turns into a fight, right? So you, you're using Captain Fairbairn's method and you chin jab the guy, you, you do everything like Captain Fairbairn says, and it turns into a fight because it doesn't work. The guy starts fighting back. The guy starts swinging back at you. At that point, you need to switch to fighting technique, not assault techniques because your assault's not working. Because the situation tells you what to do. So at that point, you went to assault the guy, it was hopefully at the right time when, when you're supposed to use assault techniques, which means the guy wasn't ready. The guy, the guy had no idea that this was coming. That's when you assault somebody. So that's when you use it, and you did it at the right time, and you executed the moves, but it didn't work because nothing has guarantees, Okay. It just didn't work for a million reasons. And that's fine. You got to accept that. So now the guy starts fighting back. At that point, you need fighting techniques because that's the new situation. In a, in a fight scenario, you need fight techniques. That's why you're in an MMA situation. Assault stuff, it, it can work. But it probably won't because you're in a fight. So you need fighting moves. You need fighting tactics. You need fighting techniques. That's why. So I, I hope that makes sense. It's the difference between assault and a fight. Now within a fight, yes, yeah, sometimes any, watch any MMA fight, any UFC, and you, you can find some where it did turn into basically an assault. It's legal, but it's an assault where it becomes one-sided. And that's when the ref's supposed to come in and stop it, all right? But that, that could totally happen, at, even in the beginning of the round, not, not just at the finishing end, but it could totally happen, right? So just, just uh, understanding the difference between assault and a fight, I, can, I think can really help, help some of you guys out. So that's it for now. Thank you for viewing, and take care, folks.